Hello, my name is Eddie, and welcome to GSI 2019, where today we will be doing our production of Hamlet. Uh, this is my second year doing GSI and my last year, sadly. I've met a lot of new people, built friendships, experienced a lot, learned a lot. Uh, just in case if there is an uh, emergency, there are exits on either side of the building. And cell phones, we do ask you to put your cell phones away. Come on silent, make sure you're present with us. We'll give you a really good show. Thank you and enjoy. Young Morton Ross, 
thinking our state to be disjoint and out of frame, hath not failed to pester us with message, importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father, with all bonds of law, to our most valiant brother. We have here writ to Norway, uncle of young Fort and Ross, to suppress his further gate herein. We here dispatch you, good Cornelius, and you, Walterman. Forbearers of this greeting to old Norway, farewell, and let your haste commence your duty. In that and all things will we show our duty. We doubt it nothing. Heartily farewell. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth than the throne of Denmark is to thy father. But what wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France, and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrote me for my slow leave by labor's condition, and at last upon his will, I seal my heart to him. I shall see you if you to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine, at thy best grace to spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son. A little more than kin, and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord, I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy united color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam, nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of soft, solemn black. No, nor the fruitful river in the eye that can denote me truly. For I have that within which passeth show. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. Find us a fault to heaven. We pray you throw to earth this unprevailing woe and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart towards you. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg is most retrograde to our desire. We beseech you, bend you, to remain here, in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, our cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hannah. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, it's a loving and fair reply. Be as herself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Come away!
break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well, Horatio, or I do forget myself. Say, my lord, your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. And what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus? My good lord. I'm glad to see you well. <laughs> but what in faith make you from Wittenberg? A true disposition, my lord. I would not hear your enemy say so. I know you are no truant. But what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. Indeed, my lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray that you do not mock me. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats that coldly burned forth the marriage tables. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his life again. I think I saw him yesterday night. Saw who? The king, your father. The king? My father? As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. On their watch, the dead vast in the middle of the night, then thus encountered, and I with them the third night kept the watch, where as they had delivered, each word made true and good. The apparition comes. I knew of your father, these hands are not more like, and we didn't think it written down their duty to tell you of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight? You do, my lord. lord. I will watch tonight. For chance you will walk again? I warrant you will. If it is soon my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. So fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty to your honor. Your loves is mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. Farewell, a blessed season this indeed. 
Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time is right, so you go in service and. Uh, farewell. Ophelia, remember well what I have said to you. Tis in my memory lost, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. What is Ophelia he has said to you? So please you something touching the Lord Hamlet. Mary well be thought. Just told me he has often late gave her private time to you, and you yourself, of, of your honest the most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me of the truth. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Who? <laughs> <laughs> you speak like a green girl. <laughs> Unsent in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe these tenders as you call them? I do not know, my lord. What I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. <laughs> think yourself a baby. <laughs> then now take these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or you'll tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love and honorable fashion. Now giving countenance to his speech, my lord, forms all the holy vows of heaven. Aye. Fringes the cat wood cocks. <laughs> On this time, be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command of Harley, or of Lord Hamlet, I would not in plain terms have you so slander any more with leisure as to talk or give words of Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. <laughs> The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It's a nipping and eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it's rough. Indeed, I heard it not. It draws near the spirit for season where the spirit holds want to walk. But what does this mean, my lord? The king doth wait tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassail as he drains his draughts of Rhenish down. Kettle drum and trumpet thus cry out the triumph of his pledge. Ay, Mary is, but to my mind, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed rebel, east and west, makes us produced and tax of other nations. So oft it changes in particular men that for some vicious mole of nature in them, be they as pure as grace, shall in the general censure take corruption from that particular fault. The dram of the old, all the noble substance of a doubt to his own scandal. Look, my lord, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of help, or goblin jam, thou comest in such a quest of a shape, that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane, oh, answer me! That can be a way with it. I will not speak to thee, I will follow Do not, my lord. My fate cries out and makes each petty artery in this body as hardy as the me and lion's nerve. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen! By heaven, I'll make a ghost to him that lets me. I say, away. Go on, I'll follow thee. Perhaps he's desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. A laughter. Something is brought in in the state of Denmark. <coughs> Where will thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me. Speak, I'm bound to hear. By my father's spirit, Doomed for a certain term to walk the night and the day, confined to fasting fires, to the foul bribes done in my days of nature, are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I for the tale unfold, whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood. Make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, and each particular hair to stand on end. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh list, if thou did ever thy dear father Oh, God! Revenge is foul and most unnatural. Murder! Murder! Haste me to know it that I with wings as swift as meditation, or the thoughts of love may sweep to my revenge. Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that sleeping in my orchard of serpents stung me. Thus, the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death 
rankly abused. But know thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle! I, that adulterant, that incestuous beast with witchcraft of his wit, wanted in his shameful lust the will of my most seen virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there. But soft, he thinks I said the morning air free, let me be sleeping. My orchard upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven on in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched. Oh, horrible! Oh, horrible! Most horrible, if thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet, remember me. Aye, the poor ghost while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember the yes by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, villain! Villain smiling! Damn villain! My tables. Me, it is, I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain at least. I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my work it is. A Jew, a Jew, remember me. I've sworn it. My lord! My lord, Captain! Let them take your hands! So be it. How is my noble lord? Oh, wonderful. Good, my lord, tell it. No, you'll reveal it. Not I, my lord. I have a... There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an arrant knave! There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. But right, you are in the right, and so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. Look, you all go pray. These were wild and whirling words, my lord. And now, good friends, give me one poor request. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord. Oh, God. Nay, but swear it. Faith, my lord. Upon my sword. You have sworn, my lord, already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Swear. Aha, uh -huh, boy, art thou there? Sayest thou so, true penny? Come on, consent to swear. Propose the oath, my lord. Never speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Swear. Well said, old bull, can't work in the earth so fast. Once more remove, good friends. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. I perchance hereafter shall think it meet to put an antic disposition on. But come, swear! What? Rest, perturbed spirit! So, gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you. Let us go in together, and still your fingers on your lips, I pray. Oh, the time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. Long stayed he so. At last, the 
little shaking of my arm that Christ his head this way back up and down. He raises a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his hope and end his being. That done, he lets me go with his head over his shoulder turned. He seemed to find his way through his eyes. For out of doors, he went without their help.
find out the cause of this effect for panic. I have a daughter. <laughs> no. Not while she is mine, who in her duty and obedience mark has given me this. Now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. <laughs> <laughs> but we shall hear thus. In her excellent white bosom, came this from Hamlet to her. Madam, stay a while, I'll be faithful. <laughs> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. For never doubt I love. O oh dear Ophelia, I am ill of these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans. But that I love thee best, O oh most best, believe it, I do. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, him. But how hath she received his love? When I have seen this hot love on the way, my young mistress does not just speak. Lord Hamlet is a prince. Out thy star, this must not be. Which done, he repulsed, fell into a sadness, thence into a weakness, and into the madness here and now he raves in all we mourn for. Do you think it is this? It may be, very likely. How may we try it further? You know. Sometimes we walk four hours together here in the lobby. At such a time, I'll lose my daughter to the Be you and I behind the errands then. If he be not from reason from falling thereon, let me be no assistant to a state but chief of farming parties. We will try it. But look, we're sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, oh, I do beseech you. Well, away. Oh, I'll join the presently. Oh, give me leave! How does my good Lord Hamlet? What's the matter you read, my lord? Words. <laughs> Words. Words. <laughs> What's the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, the matter you read, my lord. Slander, sir, for the satirical rogue says here that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, and they have a plentiful lack of wit. All which, sir, though I most believe, yet I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down, for yourself, sir, should be as old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backward. Though this be madness is method in it. <laughs> we walk outside the air, my lord. Into my grave. That empty is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes the reply are. I will leave him and contrive the means between him and my daughter. My most honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all. <laughs> except my life. Except my life. Except my life! Very well. <laughs> These tedious old fools. You go to see Lord Hamlet, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Elsinore. To visit you, my lord. No, I'm 
another occasion. <laughs> you were sent for. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you. By the rights of our fellowship, by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Nay, then I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. Why was so for, my lord? <laughs> I will tell you why. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. And indeed it goes so heavily. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, the paragon of animals, and yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, nor woman neither, though by your smile you seem to say so. My lord, there were no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what lent an entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coded them on the way, and hither they are coming to offer you service. What players are they? Even those you were wont to take delight in, the Trojanians of the city. Ah, gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore your hands. Come then, you are welcome. But my uncle father and aunt mother are deceived. <laughs> and what, my dear lord? I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. <laughs> well, we with you, gentlemen. You are welcome, masters, welcome all. I'm glad to see you well. Good friends, you are all welcome. Masters, welcome all. We'll aim to it like French falconers. Fly anything we see. Come, we'll have a speech straight. Come, give us a taste of your quality, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once. Twas Aeneas killed a Dido, and thereabout of it, especially where he speaks of crime and slaughter. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see, let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast, it is not so, it begins with Pyrrhus. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, so proceed you. Lord God, my lord, well spoken, with good accent and good discretion. <laughs> Anon he finds him, striking too short at Greeks, his antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal match, Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. And then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow, with flaming top stoops to his base, and with a hideous crash takes prisoner Pyrrhus's ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. Nothing. Out, out thou strumpet fortune, all you gods and general sin, and take away her power. Break all the spokes and fellies from her wheel, and bowl the round nave down the hill of heaven as low as to the fiends. This is too long. For this. <laughs> <laughs> He's for a jig or a tail of Baudry, or he sleeps. Say on. Come to Hecuba? But who? Oh, who had seen the Mobley Queen? Mobley Queen. That's good. Mobley Queen is good. Run <laughs> barefoot up and down, threatening the flames with running tears. A clout upon that head where late the diadem had stood, and for a robe about her lank and all o'er teamed loins, a blanket, and the alarm of fear caught up. Who this had seen with tongue in venom steeped against fortune's state would treason have pronounced? But if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pierce make malicious sport and mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made, unless things mortal move them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look, when he had not turned his color of tears in his eyes, pray you no more. Tis well. I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. Good, my lord, will you see the players well bestowed? I will use them according to the desert. Follow, follow, sir. follow him, friends. Hear a play tomorrow? Dost thou hear me, old friend? Can you play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. Very well. Follow that lord, and look you mock him not. <laughs> my good friends, I'll leave you till night. 
You are welcome to Elsinore. Good, my lord. I'm so godly with you. Now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I? Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit? Tears in his eyes, a broken voice, and all for nothing. For Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and plead the general ear with horrid speech. Make mad the guilty and appall the free. Yet I can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Why, what an ass am I? Fire bonnet about! I have heard the guilty creature sitting in a play have by the very cunning of the seamen struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before my uncle. I'll observe his looks. If he but flinch, I know my course. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. By no trick of circumstance, get from him why he puts on this turbulent and dangerous lunacy. He does confess he feels himself distracted, but by what cause he will by no means speak. Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players were overall on their way, that of this between. There did seem a kind of joy in him to hear of it, and as I think they have already ordered this man to play before him. This most true, in beseech me to entreat your majesty to hear and see the matter. With all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose unto these delights. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us too. We have closely sent for him from hither, that he, as swore by accident, may hear a friend of media. Her father and myself, lawful as feels, will so bestow ourselves that seeing, unseen, we may have the matter frankly judge and gather by him as he has behaved, if it be the affliction of his love or no, that thus he suffers for. We shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish your good duties be the happy cause of him with wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wanted way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk in here. Gracious of you to the new authorities. I am coming, but to draw my lord. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by asleep to say, we end the heartache and a thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, is a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep for chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contemplated pangs, of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin? Who would mortals bear? to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Because conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, 
the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprise is a great pith and moment with disregard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Sophia, the fair Ophelia, nymph and all thy artisans be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor fit so many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord. I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long been delivered. No, I not. pray you never see them. No, not I. I never gave you off. My honored lord, do you know right what you did? And with them, words of so sweet breath composed, the maid became more rich, but for few lost. Take these again, to the note my rich gifts wax poor, with there is proof on the time. There, my lord. I did love you once. Indeed, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I love you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be the breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, and yet I could accuse me of such things it were better my mother had not bore me. What should fellows such as I do, crawling between earth and heaven? We are arrant knaves all, believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Farewell. How come you see heavens? Where is your father? Oh, if thou hast buried, I'll give thee this blade for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery. Go and quickly do farewell. Heavenly powers restore him. I have heard of your paintings too. Well enough. God <laughs> hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. But to, I'll know more on it. It hath made me mad. I say we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery, go! Oh, what a noble mind is here of a throne! The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, I tongue sword, expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite tell that unmatched form and feature of blown youth blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me. But see what I've seen. See what I've seen. Love, his affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked a little form, was not like madness. I had put determination, thus set it down. He shall not speed to England. Happily the sea shall expel this something settled matter in his heart, whereon puts him thus for fashion of himself. How thou, Julia, you need not tell the Lord him what's that, we heard it all. My Lord, do as you please, but if you hold it fixed, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of other conference. If she find him not, to England send him. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not be washed go. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hands, thus but use all gently. For in the very torrent tempest, and as I may say, the whirlwind of passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may get it smooth. Be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of play, whose end both at the first and now was and is to hold as for <laughs> the mirror of the nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, the very age and body of the time is form and fresh. I have warned your honor. Go, make you ready. <laughs> what ho, Horatio! Here's before at your service. Horatio, will you too help me the players my case? We will, will my lord. Horatio, now our eat is just a man is ere my conversation goes with all. Oh my god. Nay, do not think I flatter, for what advancement may I hope from thee, that no revenue hast thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee. Is thou here? 
since my dear soul was mistress of her choice and could have then distinguished her election, she hath sealed with thee for herself. For thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortune's buffets and rewards and pain with equal thanks. Something is wrong with this. There is a play tonight before the king. Observe mine uncle. If his occulted guilt of not itself in kennel, it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as will consider. Give him heedful note, and after we will both our judgments join in center of the semen. If he steals odd, watch the play. There, come to the play. I must be idle. Get you a place. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent and faith of the chameleon dish I eat of the air. Promise, friend. You cannot be taken so. I have nothing with this answer. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Be the players ready? I, my lord, may stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet, sit by me. Nay, good mother, here's metal more attractive. Oh, they work <laughs> Maybe shall I lie on your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. I, uh, my lord. Do you think I'm in country matters? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought, the lie of female's legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. You're very <laughs> my lord. Who, I? Oh, God, your only jig maker. What should a man do but be married? Look you, how cheerfully my mother looks, and my father dying within these two hours. Nay, just twice two months, my lord. So long. Oh, heaven died two months ago, and not forgotten yet. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in it? No, no, they do but jest. Poison in jest. No offense in the world. What do you call the play? The mouse trap. Mary how? Tropically. This play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Gonzago is the Duke's name. If what his wife, Baptista, you shall see anon. Tis a knavish piece of work, but what of that? Your Majesty and we that have free souls, it touches us not. Let the gall jade wince. Our withers are unwrung. You're as good as a chorus, my lord. I couldn't put it between you and your love if I could see the public stallion. You're keen, my lord. Begin, murderer. Hawks, leave thy damnable faces and begin. Come. The croaky raven is fellow for revenge. Come some music! Good my lord, the king, sir. Aye, sir, what up, him? Is it his time? Marvelous! 
with greed, sir. Good, my lord. To discuss it to some friend is not so wild to my bed. Sir, I cannot. What, my lord? Make you wholesome answer my wits. Disease blind tames are pronounced. The queen, your mother, will swear that such an spirit has something to you. She says your behavior has struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey, were she ten times our mother. My lord, you once did love me. So do I still buy these pickers and stealers? Good, my lord, but what is your cause of distemper? You do surely bar the door upon your liberty if you deny your grief to your friend. Sir, I lack advancement. How can that be when you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark? Oh, come, the recorders, let me see one. To withdraw with you? Why do you go back for cover the wind of me as if you would drive me into a toil? Oh, my lord, if my duty be to one of it's one manner. Will you play upon his pipe? <laughs> no, no, touch me, my lord. Tis as easy as lying. Look you, he's a stop. Look, these that cannot come in and utter of harmony, I have not the skill. Why, well, look you now, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops, and there is much music, excellent voice in this little organ, yet cannot you make it speak. Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will, though you can't fret me, yet you cannot play upon me. God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen will speak with you in We shall obey, were she ten times our mother. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in the shape of a camel? By the mass, it tilts like a camel indeed. And methinks just like a weasel. It's back like a weasel. Or like a whale. Very like a whale. Then I will come to my mother by and by. They fool me to the top of my bench. I will come. Bye bye. I will take so. By and by is easily said. Thoughts remain below. 
words without thoughts, never to heaven go. You will come straight. Look away from the head. Tell him to pray that you brought the bear with I'll start me in here. Pray you brought the bear Mother! I'll worry. Mother! Here, Mother! Withdraw, I hear you coming. Now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet, have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And where we're not so, you are my mother. Nay, then, I'll set those to you that can't. Come, come, set me down. You shall not budge. You go not to set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What will go do? Thou will not murder me? Help! Help! Whoa! What? Oh, how? 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 How, how now, a rat? Dead! For a duck and dead! I must say, you know that? Alack, I 
There's letters sealed, and my two school fellows, whom I will trust as I will add or spank, they bear the mandate. This man shall set me packing. I'll walk the guts into the neighbor room. Come, sir, to draw toward an edge with you. Good night, mother.
swoopstick, you will draw both friend and foe, none but his enemies. Will you know them then? To his good friends thus wide all over my arms. Now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman. I am guiltless of your father's death, and am most sensible in grief for it. My gifts and sanctuary, the lack of not out shame. What noise is this? My cock they are to blame. Quoth she, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wed. So would I have done by yonder son, thou hadst not come to my bed. Oh, heat, dry up my brains. Tears seven times salt burn out the sense and virtue of mine eye. By heaven, thy madness will be paid by weight till our scale turn the beam. O oh, Rose of May, dear May, kind sister, sweet Ophelia. O oh, heaven, is it possible a young maid's wits are as mortal as an old man's life? They bore him barefaced on the bier, then his grave bring many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. Hadst thou thy wits and did persuade revenge, could not move thus. Fair's Rosemary, that's for remembrance. Pray, love, remember. There's pansies. That's for thoughts. A document in madness. Thoughts and remembrance fitted. There's fennel for you. Columbines. There's rue for you. Here's some for me. Oh, you must wear your rue with the difference. We may call it her grace of Sundays. There's a daisy. There would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. They say he could have made a good end. Fought in affliction, passion, hell itself. She turns to favor and to prettiness. Will he not come again? Will My lord, I will be ruled, 
The rather, if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. It falls right. Laertes, was your father dear to you? Or are you a painting of the sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Hamlet comes back. Well, what would you undertake to show yourself your father's son in deed more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. No place in thee should ever sanctuary. Revenge should have no bounds, but good Laertes, him that returns shall know you are come home. We'll bring you in fine together and wager on your heads. He being remiss, most generous, and free from all contriving, will not produce the foils so that with ease, or with little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated, and in a passive practice requite him for your father. I will do it, and for this purpose I'll anoint my sword. I Bought an ocean of mountebank. I'll touch my point with this contagion that if I gallop him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think of this. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. I have it. On your motions, you are hot and dry, as make your vows more violent to that end. And now he calls for drink. I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce. We're on both sipping. If he by chance escaped your bed of stuff, our purpose may hold there. How now, sweet queen? What woe doth tread another's heel? How fast they follow! Your sisters drown, Laertes. Drown? Oh, where? There is a willow, grows a slender brook, that shows his four leaves in the glassy stream. There, fantastic garlands did she come, of crow flowers, nettles, daisies long purples that our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There, on the pendant boughs, her cornet beads clambering to hang, an envious sliver broke, when down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide, and her maid, like a while, they bore her up, which time she chafed in snatches of old tunes, as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature and endued unto that element. But long it could not be to let her garments, heavy with their drink, pull the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Too much water hast thou, poor Ophelia. Therefore I forbid my tears, but yet adieu, my lord. I had a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but this volley has doused it. Let's follow, Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now here I this, we'll give it a start again. Therefore, let's follow. <laughs> she to be buried in Christian burial, and will she seeks her own salvation? I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight. The crowner hath sat on her and finds a Christian burial. <laughs> How can that be? Unless she drowned herself in her own defense. <laughs> will you have a truth on it? <laughs> if this had not been a gentlewoman, she should have been buried out of Christian burial. Come, my spade. There's no ancient to gentlemen, gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold up bad as a profession. Go, get thee in. Fetch me a stoop of liquor. Go. Mm -hmm. Sings a grave making. Custom hath made in him a 
property of easiness. But age with his steel steps hath flawed me in his clutch, and hath shipped me in silver land. As if I had never been such. <laughs> it's so it. Sing once. How the knave jowls it to the ground is before Cain's jawbone that did the first murder. It might be the pate of a politician, which this ass now or reaches, or of a courtier which could say, Good morrow, sweet lord, how dost thou, good lord? Do these bones cost no more the breeding but to play at logs with them? My mate, think on it. Whose grave is Sir Rock? Mine, sir. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie out on it, sir, it is not yours. Thou my part, sir, I lie it, and let it get it as mine. And thou dost lie in it to be in it, and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir, to give from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? No man, sir. What woman? Man, for none neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, but, rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute <laughs> the knave is. How long will man lie on the earth there he rock? <laughs> Not rotten before he dies. Many pop courses nowadays that scarce hold the lay in. Unless it's some eight year, nine year. There's a skull now. A skull that laid in the year three years. Was it? The same skull, sir, as Yorick's skull, the king's jester. Let me see. Alas, for Europe. I knew him, Horatio. Fellow of infinite jest, most excellent, fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how important my imagination it is. My gorge rings at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jives now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that would want to set the table on a roar? Count one now to mock your own grinning. But what base use may, may, may return the ratio? But talk, but talk. Ha <laughs> 
So much for this, sir. Now you shall see the other. You do remember all the circumstances? Remember it, my lord. Sir, in my heart there was a kind of fighting that would not let me sleep. Up from my cabin, my sea gown scarfed about me, and a dark oak died to find out them. At my desire, fingered their packet, and would find them through my own room again, making so bold as to unseal their grand commission, where I found Horatio, oh, royal knavery, an exact command my head should be struck off. Is it possible? Being thus with any round abilities, ere I could make a prologue to my brains they had begun to play, I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair, an earnest conjuration from the king, as England was his faithful tributary, that on the view and knowing of these contents he should the bearers put to sudden death, folded the writ up in form of the other, subscribed it, gave it the impression, placed it safely, the change they never know. So Bill and Sir and Rosencrantz go to it. Why, man, they did make love to this employment. They are not near my conscience. Why, what a king is this? He that killed my king and whored my mother, thrown out his ankle for my proper life. Is it not in perfect conscience to quit him with his arm? Is it not to be damned? Let this canker of our nature come in further evil? It must be shortly known to him from England. The issue of business is there. It will be short. But I am very sorry, good Horatio, that Chilaertes I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. Peace. Who comes here? Your lordship is quite welcome back to the den. I humbly thank you, sir. Sir, here is a newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman, full of most <laughs> excellent differences and very soft society and great showing. I know you are not ignorant. I dare not confess that, lest I should compare with him in excellence. But to know a man well, or to know himself. I mean, sir, for his weapon. What's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons. <laughs> 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 The king, sir, hath laid that if a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine, and it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, tis the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I shall win from it, I can. If not, I shall gain nothing but my shame and the audience. Shall I re-deliver you in so? To this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature. <laughs> I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours, yours. <laughs> he does well to commend it himself, but in no time tells for a stern. You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. But that was not think how ill falls here about my heart, but it is no matter. If your mind is like anything, obey it. I will forestall their apparent hinder and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man has ordered one of these, what is to leave the times? Come, Hamlet, hey, come. Take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I have done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim was madness. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. But till that time, I do accept your offered love like love. You will not wrong it. I praise it freely. Give us the foils. Come, one for me. Give them the foils, young Oxford. Cousin Hamlet, you've heard the wager. Ay, my lord, your grace hath laid the odds the weaker side. I fear not. I have seen you both, but since he is better, we have their four odds. This one's too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. These foils have all the length. Ay, my good lord. Except the soup of wine. The king shall drink to him with better breath. And in the cup and union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings of Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup. Now the king dumps to Hamlet. Come, begin. You the judges, bear where we are. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. One. 
judgment. A hit, a very palpable hit. Well, again, say, give me three. Hamlet, this pearl is thine, here's to thy help. Give him the cup. I will play this bow for a set by a while. Come. Of deaths 
put on by forced and cutting causes. And in this upshot, Pergus's mistook fall and all the Avengers reaped. All this can I truly deliver. <laughs> 